right, well, you knew I was going to start with Article 100. So, you know I'm big on Article 100 definitions. Article 100 tells us how to speak the language of the code. You wouldn't pick up a book written in Spanish or German or Japanese or, or a language that you didn't speak and open that book up and pretend to understand what it said if you didn't understand that language. That's the same case with the code. The code has its own language, and that language is discussed in Article 100, the definitions. You might think you know what the definition of a term is, but the NEC might define it differently than we would use on the street or even on the job site. So it's important that we understand the definitions. Now, there were some major changes that happened in Article 100 for the 2023 code. I'm just going to talk about the change that was made in the scope of Article 100 in this video. So the scope and the layout of this article were revised to correlate with the newest version of the NEC style manual. All right, so the NEC style manual is a, a list of, I don't want to say guidelines, but kind of requirements on, on how the code is actually written. That's where you would find things that say like, listen, when you're writing a code rule, you need to use words like shall or shall not be required. Uh, you're going to put the metric measurement first and you're going to put the imperial measurement second. And if you have exceptions, any mandatory exception has to appear first before any permissive exception. And, you know, so that's the, the style manual. Now, the style manual also tells us how the code is laid out, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. And in the latest version of the style manual, they made a revision to say, look, all defined terms in the NEC need to be in Article 100. So before 2020 and going back as, as far as I've been around, uh, most terms were defined in Article 100 if they were used in more than one article. If a term was used only in one article, we define that term in that article. So for example, uh, there's a definition for the word bundled in Article 520. And 520, I think, is motion picture theaters or, or you know, filming locations, something like that. So some people will say, like, hey, are those NM cables bundled? Well, <laughs> there's no definition that can be used throughout the code because the definition was specific to Article 520. So they change that now. There are still definitions that are specific to individual articles, but every definition is now in Article 100. So when you grab Article 100 in the 2023 code, oh my God, it just it never ends. There's 800 definitions. When we read the scope, and by the way, I'm, I'm very big on article scopes. The longer I've done this, the more I've realized that the, the answers to the hardest questions I ever field, the answers are in article scopes, and definitions. So here we have the scope of the definition article. <laughs> so yeah, I, I don't need to tell you how important I think the scope of Article 100 is going to be. Article 100 contains definitions that are essential to the application of the code. Fine. Not every word in the NEC is defined in the NEC, of course, but if we think we need to define it, then we're going to do it and we're going to put it in Article 100. So what's the difference between uh, a kitchen and a wet bar? Well, there are different rules, so we need to have a definition so that we can delineate what's a wet bar, what's a kitchen. So we have a definition of kitchen. Article 100 does not contain commonly defined terms unless they have a different definition than would be found in a typical dictionary. All right, so if you ask 100 people on the street, are wires above a suspended ceiling considered exposed? They're probably going to say, well, no, you can't see them. They're not exposed. That would be the standard definition version of exposed. Well, in the NEC, we say the wiring above a suspended ceiling is in fact exposed because it's still pretty subject to physical damage. So we want to lump it in with the same requirements as conductors and, and equipment that are on the wall. So exposed has a unique definition, so we're going to put it in Article 100. Now here's where we start talking about the changes, and it's critical that you understand this. If the definition includes a parenthetical reference to a code article, that means the definition applies only to that article. All right, so there is a definition of child care facility in Article 100. And as you read the definition of child care facility, at the end of the definition, you're going to see the number 406 in parentheses. That means that that definition applies only to Article 406. 
All right, so why is it important that I know what a child care facility is? Well, because Article 406 has requirements for tamper-resistant receptacles in 406.12, and it says child care facilities have to have tamper-resistant receptacles. Well, what's a child care facility? You go to Article 100. Before, you would have went to 406.2. Now you go to Article 100. So if it says 406, that definition only applies to Article 406. And I'm going to show an example of, of why it's so important that we understand that. Now, in addition to that, and this has been the case since, I think, 2005, 2008, the code making panel that's responsible for the definition is also found in parentheses at the end of the definition. So when you read the definition of closed closet, for example, it says it's a non-habitable room or space primarily used for storing garments and apparel. And then it says CMP-1. That means code making panel 1 has ownership of that definition. Now listen, unless you're on a code making panel or you're really deep into the code making process, you can forget this part of it, all right? Don't worry about who owns the definition, code making panel two or code making panel seven, it, it, it doesn't matter. But for those of us on the code making panels, we, we kind of do have to know who has ownership of the definition. So it says who has ownership and we know who to talk to and, and et cetera. So let's take a, a look at a couple of definitions. We have the definition of nurse's station. Now I'm not gonna read through the whole definition, but at the very end, you can see that it says 517. All right, that means this definition only applies when we're in Article 517, which is healthcare facilities. And then after that, it says CMP 15, which means code making panel 15 has ownership over the definition. Now, again, you can forget the code making panel part. That doesn't really matter that much. Do not overlook the parenthetical reference to the code article. This definition only applies to Article 517. If we scroll down slightly with our eyes, we go to the definition of nursing home. And at the end of it, it's got this big long thing in brackets. Now that's another one that most of us don't have to worry about. If we see a bracketed reference in the code, what that means is that the text is extracted from a different NFPA standard. So the definition of nursing home actually doesn't really even belong to the NEC. Look, if you, if you read the definition of nursing home and you say, hey, that's stupid, we need to change that, don't change it in the NEC. Change it in NFPA 101 because that's where the definition comes from. All right, so where it says 101, 33, 152, that means it's in section 3.3.150.2 of NFPA 101. Again, doesn't matter to 99% of us, but if you're into the code change process, that's something that you would need to know. And, you know, it's a number that can be confusing, so we have to at least know what it is. Then we have code making panel 15 again, which we can forget. So here in these two definitions, the only number that's really important to us is that 517. The definition of nursing home applies throughout the code, doesn't it? Because it's not particular to one article. The definition of nurse's station only applies to Article 517. Let's do one more quick example. Here we've got, let me scroll over here. Here we have some definitions in Article 100. Let's start down here at the bottom with the definition of busway. Now we know what a busway is, right? A busway or a bus duct. Take a look at the end of it. It says CMP 8. Fine, code making panel 8 owns it. Who cares? What's important is busway, this definition applies throughout the code. Cabinet, that definition applies throughout the code, right? We know what a cabinet is. That's what you put your panel board in. Do you know what a bus bar is? <laughs> I thought I did. Let's read what a bus bar is. A non-insulated conductor electrically connected to the source of supply and physically supported on an insulator providing a power rail for connection to utilization equipment like sensors, actuators, audio video devices, low voltage luminaire assemblies, and similar electrical equipment. Okay, that is not what I thought a bus bar was. I thought the bus bar was something inside the panel or the switch gear, switch board. Well, that's because this definition only applies to Article 393. Oh. Well, what's Article 393? Well, let's go ahead and jump into NFPA link here. Love me some NFPA link. Go down to Chapter 3. If 
find out what Article 393 is. Low voltage suspended ceiling power distribution systems. Oh boy, what is a low voltage power suspended ceiling power distribution system? Well, that's when you actually energize the ceiling grid. And the ceiling grid members are energized. You can clip conductors to them on power up limited energy circuits. So a bus bar is something that's a component of a ceiling grid system. Well, you can see where there's room for error here. I think most people would read that definition thinking that they know what a bus bar is and just trying to, you know, see if there's an odd definition and then reading that definition and getting even more confused. So it's imperative that we use the NEC correctly and Article 100 correctly and we're going to have to slow down. It's a, it, it's a pretty small little thing when it just says 517. I wish it said as used only in Article 517. Oh, I'd like to have a little more text here so it jumps out and it makes it less likely for screw-ups, but it is what it is. So there you go. That's the first change we're going to talk about. Article 100 scope.